Alright, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 1964 Ford Fairlane 500. Up front is a 4.3 liter V8 and down below is a two-speed automatic transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this Fairlane 500 because it's such a cool and beautiful car. I love cars from this era. You just don't really get this sort of chic styling anymore. They're so iconic and I think 1964 is just kind of one of those years where pop culture really favored it. And so we're gonna talk about the Fairlane 500 here today. But if you'd like to submit your own vehicle to me, you can head on over to my website, zachcradle.com slash submit. It's a quick and easy submission form, takes under a minute to fill out, and I come out to you. But let's get back to that 260 under the hood. Well, there was a bunch of V8s and actually six cylinders offered here in the Fairlane, but this is kind of a mid-range engine. It wasn't the 289, it wasn't the top dog, but it was a solid engine choice. And this was actually owned by an older lady who bought it original, and she ordered the car this way. Coupe, black seats, red paint, and the V8 under the hood. So I think she had pretty good taste. Now, this particular engine, the 260, debuted halfway through the 1962 model year, and it was actually discontinued after the 1964 model year. So although it might sound like a short-lived engine, in that time, from what I could find online, Ford produced 604,000 of these engines. So that just speaks volumes about the power and might of the mighty three manufacturers back in the 60s. Like I said, paired to it is an automatic transmission, and it's fine. It's doing the job. It's shifting gears here almost 60 years later, and I can't complain about that. Last but not least, of course, the Fairlane 500 is rear wheel drive. So how does it feel to actually drive a Fairlane 500? Well, it drives like a 60s car. If you've never driven a 60s car, let me tell you, Steering is very vague and kind of wanders. The brakes require a three paragraph persuasion just to do anything. The engine is lazy, but it is a more relaxed cruising style. It's comfortable. It's meant for sort of stopping and taking in the scenery rather than driving in a straight line. The same year that this came out, they debuted the Ford Mustang and that was the pony car. That was the you know, quick in a straight line sort of vehicle. Well, this was not that. And you definitely feel that behind the wheel. With that stuff out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have three gauges. Off to the left, I have my fuel. In the center, I get my speedometer. And off to the right, I get my coolant temperature. That's it. Steering wheel, don't get anything on it. I do have a big horn ring in the center and I get the little Fairlane logo, but that's about it. The steering wheel is massive. Very typical of the era, and I'm happy to see that. Down below the gauges to the left, I do have my light switches and my ignition switch. Kind of interesting to have it over to the left. Most American cars had it to the right, at least past the 1960s. Back in the 60s, it was decently common to have it off to the left. Moving out of the door, we have this Fairlane 500 badge, our latch to get in and out, crank window, and up top we have the openable smokers window, which I love to see. Moving into the center, we do have our stock original Ford radio. Love to see that, as well as our heater controls and defrost, things like that, nothing really going on. Down below, we have some vents, 12 volt outlet, and no center console. So unfortunately, by default, the 1964 Ford Fairlane 500 fails the big friggin' bottle test. Now, the seats are very comfortable. I only get lap belts here in the Fairlane 500, which is okay by me. They're very bouncy, and I have to say I've been enjoying my experience so far. However, speaking of seats, we do have back seats, so let's go do a back seat review. Actually, before we talk about the back seat, um, a really, really cool piece of history is that in this door sill right here is a oil change sticker from 1984. I had never seen something like this. It's before my era, so very, very cool. If you could zoom in on that camera guy. Appreciate that. Thank you. All right, getting in the back of the Fairlane 500. Uh, this 
sticks out quite a bit and will catch your belt loop as you just saw. But something interesting is that the seat folds forward, but at an angle. We also saw this in the 1964 Mustang that I filmed. So very, very interesting there. But once we are back here with the seat fixed, it's not bad. My knee is touching the seat, but not in like a grotesque, painful way. It's fine. I have ashtrays back here. I get my own little crank windows. Ooh, that's cool. It like, look at that. It's going to sleep. Good night. I'm tired. Good night. I'm going to sleep. I like that a lot. Little close hook here, badging in the center. It's a decently comfortable seat back here. This is before a lot of seat safety regulations, so I wouldn't want to be back here and you know a 10 car pile up, but it's comfortable on a Sunday afternoon going to and from church, which this car was used a lot for. It would be pretty good. Let's hop out. We'll take a quick look at the trunk and cargo space, and then we'll talk about the looks. All right, around the back of the Ford Fairlane, we do have a couple different keys here. This is the era of multiple keys. So it might take a little bit of trial and error. There we go, guys. So it's the round key with the teeth upward. This is still before the era of dual sided keys. Very interesting. Anyway, obviously back here, speakers, not factory, but what is factory is this floor mat. I've seen this in a couple of old Ford products. I really love that design. And of course, I mean, just looking back here, I mean, there's so much space in the back of the fair lane. It's really impressive. Here's some old stickers and such like that. Love seeing that. And of course you gotta keep it up. So very, very cool to see in the back of the fair lane 500. That's the cargo space. What more could you physically want? Now we gotta talk about the looks and I love the look of the fair lane. I most exquisitely like the rear end, the sort of jetliner, jet engine style that Ford was doing of this era. You also saw this in the 1964 Thunderbird that I reviewed last year. So definitely very, very cool to see that. And I love 60s styling just because it was so aspirational. We looked to the stars and said, hey, we're gonna go there. And eventually we did, but in 1964, that wasn't a certain thing. That was quite literally reaching for the stars. It was a dream. And the automobiles really reflected that in their styling. This looks like it could go to the moon. And although to my knowledge, no Fairlane 500 has left this planet, I wouldn't be surprised if someone told me that one had. However, with all of this being said, Let's get on to my final thoughts. What do I think driving a Ford Fairlane 500? My first experience with a Ford Fairlane. Well, I really love it. The driving experience is pretty terrible. The brakes give me no confidence at all. Turning it, I feel like I might tip it over. The engine doesn't want to move and the steering makes me feel like I said something wrong at dinner the night before. It's given me the cold shoulder, but that's okay. Cars in this era weren't really meant to be anything more. What I love, what I truly love about this Ford Fairlane is the attention to detail. All of the little badges and insignias and style cues that Ford absolutely did not have to put on this vehicle. They probably shouldn't have spent their R&D time touching on these little points, but that's what makes the Fairlane so special, is that this was a regular car for regular people, and yet it still made you feel like you were someone. Right now, in this video, yeah, I'm Zach Pradle, car reviewer extraordinaire. But behind the wheel, I feel like Steve McQueen. I feel like Sean Connery. I feel like some other actor that's probably 90 years old at this point. I feel like someone behind the wheel of the Fairlane, and that's because Ford took the time to actually make sure that I felt like someone behind the wheel. This wasn't just a run-of-the-mill Ford Falcon. This wasn't a Fiesta. This isn't a Taurus. No, this is a Fairlane, let alone a Fairlane 500. And that's how I feel. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Jacob for letting me take out his Fairlane 500. I was so excited to drive this car. I'd never driven a Fairlane before. Jacob has been absolutely awesome to work with. I'm filming a couple of his vehicles here today. Down to earth guy, and I can't wait to film more. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys. <laughs>